Hello all you website builders out there. In today's video, we are gonna walk through how to use the Bloxy WordPress theme to build an absolutely stellar header on your WordPress website. And for inspiration today, we are gonna look at apple.com and try to replicate some of the best pieces of their header um, and apply it to our website. And we're gonna start from complete scratch today using the Bloxy WordPress theme and diving really deeply into the Bloxy header builder on your website. The things that we'll do and that you'll have as an outcome today is a sticky header on your WordPress website. We'll build these three different sections and you'll have an awesome looking mobile header as well, where if we look at how Apple looks on mobile is they have a beautiful uh, header here with a nice fly out modal navigation. So in this tutorial, we're gonna dive into how to use Bloxy Header Builder uh, and get everything going from soup to nuts for your WordPress website header today. So let's dive on in. On our website here, we have a complete bare setup. Uh, you'll see it's just using the 2020 or 2021 WordPress theme at the moment. Uh, looks like 2020. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually install the Bloxy WordPress theme. So go into themes, click on add new and search for our friends Bloxy and it will be this one right here. So we're gonna install this puppy and activate it. Before we do anything and dive into the, the website builder or the header builder inside of Bloxy, we're gonna go up to where we see this Bloxy um, sidebar navigation here. There might be a little modal pop-up for you that asks you install the Bloxy companion. Go ahead and do that. And what that does is it adds this control panel on the left side and the upper side of your WordPress nav bar that gives you control over your theme in a much more powerful way. And the first thing that we're going to do is click on starter sites and feel free to pick any of these starter sites for today's demonstration because Apple has this grayish section here. We're going to go ahead and install this modern shop. So we're going to click import. You'll see in this, you'll have a child theme automatically installed. This is great, go ahead and add that. What this does is if you add any custom code one day to your WordPress website into the functions um, file in your theme, you're not gonna corrupt or um, override any of the changes that you make on the uh, non-child Bloxy theme. So let's go ahead and do that. And for our web page builder, we'll choose Elementor. Um, and then it's recommending some plugins for us to activate and install. And let's make this a complete clean install. If you have content on your website already, uncheck this. We don't wanna override any of the content or images or pages that you have today. So really make sure to uncheck this. But for today, since we're starting from scratch, we're gonna go completely clean install. This shouldn't take too long, anywhere from 20 seconds to maybe 60 seconds, depending upon your hosting provider. Um, we're using this in a local environment, so it's just using my computer to, um, to do all of this. So once this clean install is done, you're gonna have a pretty good looking modern shop already. And before we dive into any of the details on making your page archives or your product pages or your homepage look better, we're gonna focus just in this video on how to use the Bloxy Header Builder to make a beautiful header in WordPress, a sticky header in WordPress, uh, and then make it totally mobile responsive so it looks awesome. So here's our theme with the starter site up and running. Um, and you can see right now that the header takes up quite a bit of real estate. And in Apple's case, they have three distinct sections on their header, this top row, middle row, and bottom row. And we're gonna replicate almost exactly what Apple's done on our website. So in order to do that, now that we've installed this dummy content and have this starter theme, a starter site taken over the look and feel of our website, let's go ahead and click the customize button in the upper left here. And this is gonna open up all of your customization options inside of Bloxy. Uh, we're not gonna go through everything today and we're mainly gonna live in this header section. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of advanced functionality and uh, easy customizations that you can make using Bloxy to make your website exactly the way you want, um, which is why we love Bloxy. 
So let's go ahead and click into our header section. And off the bat, you're gonna see a few things. I'm gonna walk through the screen real quick just so you have a lay of the land and understand uh, everything at your disposal here. So inside of the left pane, when you click into headers, you're gonna see all of your widgets um, that you can use to drag right into your website. So for example, if we wanted to add a button, let's say maybe right next to those social icons up here, we can just click and drag this button right onto our web page, and voila, there's our button. If we wanted to move our logo around, I'll show you how to do that in just a second. But all of these widgets here give your website additional functionality, things like a search box rather than just the search icon. So in order to replicate what we're gonna use as inspiration on apple.com, uh, we're gonna need our logo in the upper left, our menu right here in the center of the top row, a search box and our cart icon. And let's just actually get things arranged here so we can start following along. So here's our modern shop logo. Let's bring that to the top row on the left-hand side, just like Apple has the Apple icon on the top left-hand side. And actually, before we do anything else, I'm gonna give you a couple more bits of information around the Bloxy header builder. As you can see, as I hover over these different rows, Bloxy's labeled them top row, main row, and bottom row. And then there's settings icons that you can click into here to start manipulating any of the style of those given rows. So this is perfect, because uh, we're gonna go in and do a lot of customizations to make it look exactly the way we want and each row has its own set of settings. So um, we'll, we'll continue to play with that in just a minute. Let's go back to Apple. It looks like the top row also has the navigation right in the middle. So let's take that menu one and slide it right here in the middle. Now we can see our home, shop, products, about us, contact us on the top row, which is exactly what we want. Then they have a search icon and a cart icon. So let's drag our search icon up here to the right. Let me move my face over here. Now we have search and then let's move cart right up next to that. Now we have search, cart, menu, um, and our logo. And if we use this fly out arrow over here, we can now see what it will look like live on our website. This is the beauty of the Bloxy header builder is it makes it really easy and intuitive to drag and drop and start manipulating all of your content here. So now let's take a peek back at Apple and start to see what row two looks like. It is just one big row with a link right in the middle um, with a blue background. So um, let's just try to figure out the best way to do this now. So we're gonna get rid of our social icons, get rid of our button and get rid of this account widget and it looks like our main row height is quite a bit. Let's click into Apple just to see what their height is here. We right click inspect element and hover over it. Looks like it's a 44 pixel height as you can see in the upper left of the screen there. So we're gonna change this to be exactly the way we wanted it with Apple. Perfect. So let's go back and drag in a Let's see, let's do uh, an HTML box right here in the middle. Now we have our sample text in a 44 height main row. And let's now turn uh, the, the background of this row into the blue. So I'm gonna right click, inspect this element over here. And now it looks like Apple uses this color. So we're gonna copy this hex code, go back into our Bloxy demo header builder, click on the main row settings. This is where we're gonna manipulate a lot of the, the row information here. And we're gonna click on design. And now we have our color picker right here. As you can see, it's set to white at the moment. Let's click on color. And then this hex section, paste that color that we just took right from Apple's website. Now you can see we have this blue bar the same way Apple has this blue bar. What we're gonna do now is turn this sample text into a link that looks just like Apple. So let's click into the HTML section, maybe verbatim, copy what Apple has here. And 
And as you can see, it, right now it's linking to Apple. If you wanna edit where that link is going to, click on edit, and now we can just have this go to you know our slash learn more page if we had one of those. So now we have the button in our middle row, but it looks like the colors are yellow. So we're gonna go back and manipulate what that looks like here in just a second. So let's do that actually right now while we're at it. So in this main row, we're still on this HTML widget as you can see, we're customizing that. We added our link, we go into the designer of the HTML widget, and we can see our text initial, our link initial, and our link hover. So because this is a hyperlink, what we're gonna do is change our link initial to white, which you can do in many ways, either change the hex color here, click on our color picker at the top if you have that preset white already added there, or if it were that yellow or black color or red color, you can just click and drag around this color wheel to get the exact color that you want. Now we're on white, we can click out of this, and we have our white uh, text right here. It's starting to look a lot like Apple. It looks like their font size is smaller than ours, so let's try to turn down our font size a bit. Let's lower it. So we can click on the 15 pixel font size, and then let's make this smaller. I think theirs was 14 pixels on their website, so we'll do 14 pixels on our website. And the last thing is when we hover over this, you see how it's that kind of horrid orange yellow color. Let's see what Apple does when you hover over theirs. Theirs stays white and just underlines. Ours is already underlined, which we might be able to change in our link settings. But let's just make this a little bit off white so we can show people that there is some sort of hover effect happening here. So ours are now looking white to a slight gray, which I kind of like a lot. So we're gonna stick with that and we're gonna click publish just to save our changes so far. So now we have our main header row up here with our logo, the navigation, the search, and the cart, which we'll edit in just a little bit. We have our main row, which is that uh, link text here that's gonna direct people throughout our website. And then we wanna build a bottom row with another call to action. It looks like this one has more of a gray background. So let's go ahead and add that here as well. So I think you're starting to get the hang of this if you're following along nicely. We have our bottom row. We're gonna set this to that 44 pixel height the same way we did the middle row. And what we're gonna do is change the design to be a little bit more grayy like apples here. So let's see if we can find the color of their, their row here. Here we go. Here's their background color, FB, 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 or FD at the end there. So we're gonna copy that hex color, go into here, go into bottom row settings, look at the background color, and we're gonna paste that code right on top. Now we have this gray color background, and when we drag a widget on it, maybe menu two, or we can do another HTML box. Um, depending upon what level of Bloxy theme you have, there's a completely free version, which is everything we've walked through here today. But if you wanted to have multiple HTML boxes the way that I do, and I can clone this item, you have to upgrade to Bloxy Pro. So if you wanna work around that, just drag a different menu in there. If you don't wanna upgrade, that's okay. Uh, and then what we can do is change those items to be a link in there. But if you don't wanna do that, Let's clone this HTML box by clicking this clone item. Now we can see HTML2, and we're gonna drag that right into the middle of the bottom row here. What's interesting is now you can see that the text is the same as the one above. It's a white text, which we're gonna to have to change. Um, let's go ahead and make that maybe the, uh, the, the normal color here. So our link initial, let's now make it this gray color, and our hover, lightens up a bit. I don't mind that, but let's make the link hover a little darker, which I think just is more in line with the rest of our theme here. And Apple looks like they give you kind of a call out, so let's change this here on ours by pasting right into our page here. So now our header is starting to look pretty good. We have three sections, our top, 
our main and our bottom. When we scroll, notice there's no stickiness though. Let's go ahead and try to change that now the same way Apple leaves that top row desired to be sticky for us. So let's go ahead and see how we set that up. So let's go back, scroll all the way to the top. Now we're just in the main section of our header right here. Let's click on headers. And now we can see this global header. This applies to every page in our website. And right inside that, we have the sticky header functionality, sticky functionality. We're gonna turn that on. And what's cool about this is we can choose which parts of our header we want to remain sticky. Since we're trying to replicate what Apple's doing, it looks like they only have their top row as sticky. So let's go ahead and do that on our side. It looks like this one is only top row. And now when you scroll down, our header stays right on the top. It's starting to look really nice and very Apple-y, if, uh, if that's even a word. So now we have our top, main, and bottom. We have our products and navigation right here in the middle, our cart off to the right, and our logo there as well. Um, I think we're looking pretty good. So let's hit publish. And let's go and view our website here. Nice. So side by side, we have Apple, which is uh, just a different color palette than ours. Um, they have their top, middle, or top, main, and bottom. We have our top, main, and bottom. I think this is looking pretty good. If we want, we can even change the color of this header, which I can show you in just a little bit if we want to make it exactly like Apple. And one thing that we can also do is try to smush everything a little bit closer together inside of this top row, the same way that Apple doesn't have so much spacing between their logo, the search, and uh, cart icon. So let's go ahead and try to do that now. So we're gonna go black and back into our customizer here, go back into the header builder, click on top row, and the way that we do this is right now we have our logo off to the far left and our search and cart widgets all the way off to the far right. We're gonna merge everything right into the middle here. Now what this is gonna do is basically smush our information right into the middle. Now we're looking a lot more Apple-y, right? Starting to get there, which is cool. And let's look at our top row settings. Let's make this full width to see if that changes anything for us. It doesn't do too much. But now let's go into our menu items. Let's actually click in the cart for a second. We're gonna get rid of this dollar amount. So, and, and we're also gonna change the, the icon to look more like Apple, which looks like this type four here. Yep. Um, and what we're gonna do is turn off these cart total positions. So in order to do that, where it says zero pounds, we just unclick where we don't want that to show, right? Now we don't have the icon or the, the dollar amount next to it like Apple does, that's perfect. And what we wanna do is start to stretch things out a bit more. So let's click on our logo. Let's see if with Modern Shop, if there was anything in here that was just the M, yeah. Let's use just this logo. Now instead of having the, ver the words on there, we have just our, our M icon. It's starting to look really nice. Um, and then let's get this going. Let's now start to open this up a little bit. So our item spacing, let's actually just start maybe with the, the logo side for a bit here. If we add some more menu items, let's see what happens here. So in order to add to your menu, Let's, uh, let's do that. So we're gonna click on our menu. This is just the settings for our menu. So what we need to do is go all the way back into the theme customizer. Now we're at the main and we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. And we see our core menus. Since we know that this is the main menu on our website, we're gonna click on that one. And let's start to like maybe pull some things out onto the top of the the menu side so that it starts to maybe get a little wider like we want in the Apple, right? So now we have right sidebar, let's get left sidebar in there as well. And this is where you can actually add real pages. And we're just gonna rename them from our menu side so it looks more like Apple. So we have Mac, iPad, iPhone, watch. Let's start with that. So instead of home, let's call this Mac, 
instead of left sidebar, let's call this uh, iPhone. And then we have, what else did we have? Mac, iPad, iPhone. Watch. And TV music support. And now click publish. And let's see what it's starting to look like on our site. So we have Mac, iPad, iPhone, watch, TV, music support, the same way that Apple has their locations. But you can see that theirs are a little bit more spread out. So let's see if we can add a little bit more uh, uh, space between our items here. So we're gonna click back into customize, go all the way back up to our header. Now we're gonna click on this menu one. And now we have this item spacing section. So if we move these farther apart, you'll see it gives our, our items up here more space to breathe. So let's go ahead and click publish on this and reload to see how it looks with a little bit more space. I think our menu items look great, but what we need to do is add a little bit more space between the search, our cart, and our logo. So let's now figure out the best way to do that. If we click into the logo, we can go into design and now we can add some margin. What margin is, it's basically giving you more space between the top, top uh, right, bottom, or left side. And if we if we add 10 to, to this, notice how our this, this lock icon is here, which is gonna add 10 to everything. So let's click unlock. And we're gonna add some distance between the Mac and our logo so it's on the right side. So maybe let's see what 50 pixels looks like. I think we're gonna need a little bit more than that. Maybe try 70, maybe a little less, 65. Now I feel like we're starting to get into some good spacing right there. Let's click publish. And let's do the same thing on the search. So we're gonna go click on the search icon, hit design, unlock the margin so that we can just play on one side. On the left, let's add that 65. And on the right, let's add that 65 as well. Now our header is looking really awesome and spaced out very similarly to how Apple has it too. Maybe we can tighten this up a little bit here. It seems like there's a good amount of space. So instead of 65 on the right, let's maybe bump that down to 55. And This is where the, the fine tuning comes into play and I like the way that looks. So we hit publish. And now let's view what our site looks like starting to look really, really sharp. We still, for whatever reason, have this number next to it. Let's see what's going on there. Let's try to troubleshoot that. Might be cached for whatever reason. Let's do a little hard refresh. Do a little hard refresh. Not sure why those dollar signs are still coming up. We had turned them off. Um, let's try to hit publish again. And maybe we'll just get out and see what the heck is going on. Okay, it, it worked, it grabbed. So now we have our good icon, similar to, more similar to Apple's. We have our search box. When we click it, it comes up with a nice little uh, global search here. Support, Mac, iPad, iPhone, all the navigation items that you want. Uh, let's just make sure, so theirs aren't capitalized. Maybe we can lowercase ours. I'll show you how to do that or capitalize just the first letter. And then as we scroll, we have our header section grab on the top. This is looking pretty good. I'm pretty proud of us here. So let's go back in and let's try to change all the capitalizations to match that of Apple instead of just having caps on everything. So let's go back into customize, which is our best friend. Click on header click on menu, click on design. And as we scroll down, let's see if there's some settings here. It's actually, I, it's a little hidden. So we're gonna click these three dots. And right now it's telling us uppercase every letter instead of just capitalize the first one. Now we click that, looks like it's capitalized. If we were to unclick that, it would just match whatever it is we typed in. But in this case, we want to 
Uh, and let's see if Apple does a lowercase i, it does. So we're, we're not gonna click capitalize. We're gonna leave this off because we did a good job in our menu of capitalizing it the way we want. And let's hit publish. And let's actually go back and do something uh, at a global level for our theme. Is let's go play with the colors a bit because what we're seeing here that's happening is our yellow is our hover over where we might want it to be in our case of our, of our theme. Uh, maybe we want that to be like a blue hover. So we click into colors. Let's just see what happens if we change our color palette to this blue one. Ooh, that started to work nicely. And if we wanted to manipulate what the hover color looked like, we can do that multiple ways. We can change it in our palette or we can go right into that item and change that initial and hover state. I'm really liking the way this is looking, so I don't really wanna play with it too much. So let's click publish. And now let's just review. Let's, I think our header from a, a desktop perspective is pretty perfect. I don't know about you all, but I'm really happy with the way this looks. Apple has their logo up here, all of their navigation items. Maybe we can make ours a little bigger so they're not so small, which we can do in just a second here. They have their main row with the link and then their bottom row with that call to action as well. And we've got the same exact thing going on and I just think it looks pretty stellar. Last thing we wanna do on our, on our desktop version is let's make these texts uh, a bit bigger in font size. So again, we can get there multiple ways. We can click on these three dots, which brings us right to that menu. And now we can see the font size and let's click it up. So that's 13 pixels. 14, let's keep it at 13. I think that one extra pixel does a pretty good job for us. Let's reload and see how this looks. I think we got ourselves a pretty awesome header. And so as you can see, there's a drop down too. If we wanna change the drop down styling, we can do that as well. Maybe I'll show you how to do that next. And then what we'll wanna do is look to see what our mobile header looks like. With, which right now is, is not that beautiful because we got some ugliness going on. We got that blue background, uh, flat on the left with, with maybe the incorrect menu. So we're gonna play around mobile in just a second after we get really, really happy about our desktop version here. Um, so what did we just say? We wanted to um, change the backgrounds or the styling of our drop downs like we have with watch here. So let's go back into our customize, click into header. Once again, I told you we would be using this a lot. And as we scroll down, we have top level options here. We also have drop down options here. And so as you can see, the item spacing is set to 13. That's the spacing between these items. If we were to make this smaller, you'd see it smaller. If we make this bigger, you see it bigger. I kind of like the 13 pixel item spacing. The thing that I don't particularly love about the way that this drop down works today is one, the color background, two, the divider option, and three, this little gap that's happening between the top of the drop down and the actual uh, bottom of the top row. So let's close that gap. This drop down offset, if we just bring this back to zero, now our drop down attaches really nicely to our top row. So we're good there. Let's maybe make the width of this a little bit bigger. Let's make this 220 pixels, which adds a little bit more width to the menu item and the drop down. And now let's go into our design features here. I think the font size is good. I kind of like having it a little bit smaller than the top. But what we're gonna have to do is let's change the background color to white so it matches the top row. And now you'll see that our text is basically invisible because the font color is white. So let's make this, this dark bluish here. Love the way this is looking. And now let's change up that divider where we had it before in dots, we're gonna make it a straight line and maybe we're gonna give it a nice little gray feature here. Oh, this is looking good. So as we zoom in, you'll see a subtle gray divider, our dark text with a blue hover on our uh, links here. And this is exactly the way we want. Maybe I wanna add a little bit more roundness to the bottom of the dropdown as well. So let's do that. We can see that the bottom border radius is only two. 
uh, as well as the bottom left. So let's maybe make this 10 and let's see 10. Now we got this rounded bottom here. I'm loving that. Feels a little apple-y to me. And let's go ahead and click publish and start to see how this looks. Oh yeah, now I think we're cooking with gas. I think our desktop version is looking really sharp, very apple-y to us, but our own spin, which is starting to feel good. Um, so I think we're done now with the desktop version. Now let's start manipulating and styling up our mobile header. So to navigate over to the mobile header, you can just click on mobile header in the bottom, the power of Bloxy making it very simple for us. And now with our mobile header, we'll see very similar layouts. So we're gonna show this builder again. We have a top row, a main row, and a bottom row. And then you'll see one additional feature that is our, our off canvas menu or off canvas uh, section here, which has our menu and these social icons. Before we play with that, let's get our mobile header set up correctly. So the same way Apple, let's, let's go look to see what they do. They have their same color on their menu as they do on the desktop, and they have these three sections. They have their cart on the upper right and a mobile flyout on the, on the hamburger menu on the upper left. We're almost there. What we'll see is we added this weird margin on the right for our logo on desktop right here. We have to change that for mobile. So let's just move that to zero, which is gonna recenter our logo. Let's actually move everything up a bit because we're gonna to wanna to do the same thing we did on the mobile side as we did the desktop side. Now we got our style from the top row. This is looking awesome. I think we're in good shape there. And then let's add what we did on the mobile side. So HTML1 and HTML2 are on the desktop side into our mobile side. So we're gonna get out of here, drag HTML1 to our main row and drag HTML2 to our bottom row. And voila, we got ourselves a pretty awesome mobile header now. Looks like there's a lot of spacing here though. So let's try to close that down a bit. We'll set the mobile spacing to 50, give it a little bit more room to breathe. Same with the bottom row and maybe same with the top row. Oh, it's already there, perfect. Now we have ourselves a pretty apple mobile header. That was easy using Bloxy theme. And let's check out the menu flyout. It comes from the left side. Not bad, not bad. And it has some weird menu items. So let's play with that for a second. We're gonna click the off canvas menu. We're gonna select that main menu that we had on mobile. And now we have our uh, pretty perfect mobile menu. I'm loving the way this looks. It's actually almost better than Apple's, which is kind of cool. And let's also just hide our social icons because we don't really need those here. So here's our mobile header. Now when you uh, look at it compared to Apple, theirs is just a little darker than ours, but has the same sections here. Ours has the white background, which I like a lot. And when you click this menu item on the left, we have a flout from the left with our navigation and a little drop down there. This is pretty sharp. Uh, if we wanted to, maybe we'll change one thing. Instead of this flyout being dark black on the background, maybe we'll make it a white flyout so it kind of matches the look and feel of our site. So let's pull back up that mobile builder or header builder here, click on off canvas, click back into design. And our panel background, let's change this to white. Now we have white and notice the text isn't visible because it's white text. So we're gonna have to change that here as well. So let's go click on to off canvas menu, click design. Instead of font color being white, let's give it that blue that we have. And hope let's click refresh or publish this and maybe view it. Let's see how we're doing here. If we view our live site from a mobile perspective, boom, we got ourselves a very apple looking website. And I think we are basically done. Maybe we'll make this text a little bigger so that as people are on mobile, the, the targets to click are, are a bit bigger. So let's get out of here. Click customize again, go back to our header builder, click mobile header, 
off canvas menu. You guys are going to be experts at this by now. And let's turn the size of our mobile flyout text up a bit. So here we go. We're up to 21, 22. Let's do it so it's like kind of bold. I like that right there. So if we were to open this up from our mobile side, this is what it's going to look like. I think we got a pretty sharp looking menu. Awesome. So I think there we have it. You've now, if you followed this to whole tutorial, we've done a complete walkthrough on how we can make a beautiful uh, header in WordPress using Bloxy theme. Um, it has sticky header functionality. So on, mo on desktop, when you scroll down, you can always access your navigation. I love that. Uh, on mobile, as we inspect it and see what it looks like, looks absolutely stellar and your visitors won't see this uh, login section here. That's just because you're an admin. Our flyout, really sharp. We have drop downs here that match our, our, our style. I think we did it. So if you followed this complete tutorial, you should now be able to go back, watch these step-by-steps, get really accustomed to the Bloxy header builder um, and be able to build a, any kind of header you would like. In this case, we drew inspiration from Apple and made our website look and feel very much like Apple. So I, I hope you give yourself a nice pat on the back. Uh, and I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. We can get to any questions you have if you have any. Um, feel free to like this video and, and subscribe to our channel for more content. The one action that I would love to ask of you as a, as a website builder, designer, and creator is feel free to, in the section below in the comments, leave topics of videos you would like to see. Um, we are always looking for new tutorials to give to our viewers so that you can go and build beautiful websites online and really succeed. So um, hope today was a good walkthrough of using Bloxy Header Builder with the Bloxy theme. Uh, and make a sticky header in WordPress alongside a very beautiful mobile responsive experience, all for free using WordPress, Bloxy theme, and that's it. So that's a wrap on today's video on how we make a beautiful header in WordPress and draw inspiration from the best company in the world, Apple, so that our visitors and shoppers and viewers have an amazing experience across your website and brand. So uh, thank you for tuning in. And if you have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments below. And thank you for watching. And I hope uh, your website success is now leveled up. Take care, everybody, and have a good one.